Hello and uh, welcome to another edition of the Emoji Circle. My name is Keith Smokey Johnson. And for those of you who are new to the show, what the Emoji Circle is, is an african centered talk show where we correct errors where errors are found and we introduce facts where we find that so many of us are working on fiction when it comes to who we are as people of African descent. And since this show, uh, this show will be coming uh, and be shown during Black History Month, I thought it was appropriate for a, a normal discussion uh, that I have on this show to focus on what history it is. Because the purpose of this show also is an understanding that only through dialogue can there be a shift in consciousness. And when you have a shift in consciousness, is the only way you can change your world. And today, uh, I have the honor of having a brother to have a conversation with that I've known for uh, many years, and I finally got him to come on this show. Uh, uh, welcome to the Emoji Circle, Baba Anda uh, Ma'at. And um, he is a, an author. He is a social activist. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's all those things that we should strive for in our black community, and he's a model of possibility. And 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 and, I, and he's one of those elders that you you want to talk to around here. And we were lucky to have him in San Antonio. Welcome to the to the Emoji Circle, brother. Well, I Honey. appreciate it, my brother. It's been a long time coming, and I, of course, it's an honor to be here with you, knowing our history and background, you know, yeah. and knowing this path we've been on for a long time. L long time, exactly. Uh, but before we start our conversation on what is the p real purpose of history, what did Carter G. Bush uh, meant when he established this uh, Black History Week in 1926, uh, it's more than just dates and times. It's more than just, I always say on this show that we should use our history as a resource, yes. not a reference point. It's okay, don't get me wrong, it's okay to know that the pyramids were mm -hmm. uh, built by people that look like us or uh, mm -hmm. we accomplished this throughout history. Those dates and times are personal. But he didn't do that just for that. Yes. And um, as part of our African history, uh, celebration, there are certain traditions of, of, of we as African people that Baba Anda and I always keep in mind and yeah, wherever exactly. we go. That's why I, 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 I love talking to him. And one of the traditions, before you start any type of uh, uh, program or yes, lecture, I know I've seen yes. you do it as a lecturer, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I've done it on occasion in the past, we have to honor our ancestors, no doubt. those who came yes, before us. And um, we would ask that ancestor who, or, or the elder who might be in the audience to, for permission to start whatever yes. the, the, the event would be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm older than you, but since I'm being part, I'm, I'm um, taking part in the discussion, yes, uh, we have no problem but ask a, uh, an ancestor for permission to yes. start our discussion on this very important, and I hope people will recognize the very important yes, topic about what history is about. Mm -hmm. And the uh, I'm going to put an image of that ancestor up on the screen. Um, he, he is at um, Dr. John Henry Clark, mm -hmm. uh, had a great influence on me, and I'm, I'm sure he had on, on you as an, as an elder. But he had a quote, a very famous quote, that those who are in the African American community, those who are conscious and have been studying, are aware of. And I'm going to read that quote that has a profound uh, uh, effect. And it says, the history is a clock that people use to tell their political and cultural time of day. It is also a compass that people use to find themselves on the map of human uh, geography. The role of history is to tell a people what they have been and where they have been, what they are and where they are. Right. But the most important role this elder tells us that history plays is that, ha that it has the function of telling the people where they still must go mm. and what they still must become. That's right. how, many, how many of us focus on history like that? That's I, right. You know, I yeah. do, and I know you do. So what do, how do you... Uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, raising up the name of Dr. John Henry Clark is most appropriate, particularly going into Black History Month. Exactly, yes. And him being a great uh, scholar and a historian, which I, you know, admire greatly the history he has shared. Because, I mean, you can go out there and get the information. He's written a number of books. But what 
really stands out is that he was teaching history every day. day. Exactly. And I say that to say that, you know, though we are talking about Black History Month, is that we must study this history every day. This is a 365 day every day. And the thing is, uh, Marcus Garvey, one of our great pan mm, Africans, said one. that what humans have done, humans, humans can, can do. do. Exactly. And the understanding of history, as Malcolm said, is that of all of our studies, history, history. is best qualified to reward our research. Now, when we look at what they're saying to me is that we got to understand our history, where we have come from, because we got to use it as you're saying, as a resource. resource to help guide us into the future. There's lessons that we must learn from our past in order to go forward into our, our future, future, which is the spirit of Sankofa, which is the symbols the, you have right, right there. Yes. yes, sir. And actually, I made this my family's uh, symbol. So Beautiful. my children yes. know, my grandchildren know, That's right. this is our family. I chose to do that. Yes. So, so in any little way you can, there is things that you can do to remind yourself right. of who you are. No um, he, he talked about uh, the Honorable uh, Marcus uh, Mosiah Garvey, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Um, he also said, a people without knowledge of their uh, history, origin, or culture right. is like a, a tree, tree without, without roots. roots. And that's another powerful, f yes. a powerful thing, yeah. isn't it? Because when you think about that, what happens to a tree without roots? It dies. You know, it's like uh, if, you ha if we have amnesia, we leave the house in the morning. We get hit in the head. And then all of a sudden we have amnesia. We don't remember where we lived. We don't remember our name. We don't remember our family members. We don't remember anything. Now, that would be a a horrible condition to live in, not knowing where you have come from. And for us as a people, this is part of our conditioning, but this also means that we have a great challenge ahead of us. You know, that's a, and that's the, that's the thing. When you talk yeah. about that amnesia, I say the same thing. Yeah. See, that's what I love about this brother. We kind of think of light in, 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 in wherever we go, you know, yes. in the circle that you have. Cause, mm -hmm. um, to me, the goal of history is to express the living present. That's how I say what you mm -hmm. just said. And, and I also use the, the aspect of, of amnesia, you know, because mm -hmm. if for some reason I, th I, I lost who I was, my memory, my history, yes. my personal history, mm -hmm. I couldn't even find my car. Where we park, where I parked before I got here. Yes. Uh, when you go to a uh, a doctor, what is the first thing that doctor must do to to before you even look at your history? Yes. You got to get your uh, mm -hmm. medical history. That's when right. you go to get a loan, they can look at you. You got to look <laughs> at your history. financial history. That's right. So that's why I said history is more than just dates and time. That's you right. cannot function as a, a viable human being mm -hmm. without that personal or uh, history. Everything about you is history. Yes. You know, yes. reason that we call, I call you a Rafiki, and for those who don't know what Rafiki is, it's a Kiswahili word that just means friend. Friend, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. we, we, we are steeped in our culture, yes. which is okay. okay. Yes. We walk proud in our culture yes. because we are knowing our history, mm -hmm. and it's part of a learning process still. Yeah, and I think that's what we have to understand about the importance of black history. And I know it's, we're going to talk about Carter G. Woodson mm. and why he established yeah. what yeah. at that time was Negro History Week and, of course, eventually became Black History Month. But Carter G. Woodson understood the importance of us uh, being in planet in our history, understanding that we have a great history, we have a great story to tell, but more important, as Marcus Garvey was saying, what humans have done, done humans human can, can do. do. It tells us that what we have done, done in the past, we can do today and in moving into the future. Know thyself is an ancient term that uh, yes. is uh, it's on, on the walls of, of Kemet. Yes. yes. And for those who don't know what we say Kemet, we're yes. talking about what the Greeks call the later, you know, Johnny Come Lately, who were in yeah. awe of what they saw in the, in the yes. land of the blacks, or uh, yes. the Kemet New people, or yes. the black people. Because, you know, when I had an opportunity in 1999 to travel to Kemet, of course, now they call so it Egypt. Egypt yeah. And, of course, yeah. Egypt is in Africa. But when you I had not a in the Middle East? I, no, I, I think somebody <laughs> tried to move it there, but it didn't happen. That last time I looked at the map, you're right. It's one of the 54 countries on that continent. Yeah, yeah that very big continent. No doubt. But when I went there, I, I saw 
know thyself, but I saw the perfection, uh, humans striving for perfection. What humans have done. Humans what, so do. what humans have done, humans can do. Yeah. So it spoke to the, to the need of us to understand that. So now we stand in, in this place at this time asking ourselves, what can we do? Well, humans created the world. And I was thinking about this as, you know, was, I was coming here. You know, when we needed food, we developed agricultural science. Yep. Okay? And when, when we needed uh, a communication system, we spoke words and then we wrote books because that's where it comes out. The papyrus paper, you know, comes out of Kemet, uh, Egypt. And that's where we have the first books. So we have the first mathematical books, you know, Talk about the, the Rhine papyrus. You had the first the medical, yeah. F. Smith papyrus. Yeah. So you got these books that's coming. The first uh, spiritual books coming out of Kemet. So now, yeah. so now we're looking at what we have done. So we can't go back there and just stay there, but we got to understand that we are the descendants of those and what they needed at that time they created so ask ourselves what do we need at this time and then know that we have the power to create it and all those things that you said that was created for humankind yes. came out of the continent of africa yes you see yes. we are conditioned yes. by a thing that i always call cultural imperialism yes okay cultural uh, culture is the way of people define themselves mm -hmm. create themselves and introduce themselves to the world Okay, that's, that's right. the purpose. Of, that's what Dr. Clark in that yes. statement was talking about mm -hmm. when he said that it's like a compass. Yes. But if you are dominated by another group as our people, you know, even though we have that long and glorious history, mm -hmm. we have been through cultural imperialism. That's the, the culture used as a weapon by the dominant group to maintain their status of power. Yes. Okay, and if you let another people uh, impose their culture, Mm -hmm. and define their culture, which defines who you are, because that's what you do. You introduce yourself. But we were introduced in the last 400 years. To someone else's culture. Yeah. So it's like moving into someone else's house. <laughs> exactly. They, have, they set all the rules. They design the house. house. They put their pictures up in the house. And then we expect it to live in that house and God be guided by their rules. So imagine that. And that's what, that's what see, Carter yes. G. Woodson was seeing. Yes. He was seeing that the educational yes. system yes. at the turn of the century wasn't producing in us yes. the knowledge, the uh, accurate view yes. of, of ourselves. Of, of ourselves. Yes. And it had a profound psychological uh, effect. People don't realize that mm. psychology mm. with people is passed down culturally. That's right. It, you know, That's the way right. that DNA is mm -hmm. passed down biologically. Yes. You yes. know, and I think it was Naeem Akbar, I once mm -hmm. say, heard when he was, uh, uh, came here to lecture, he said something that was very, these things stick with me, these, yes, these, these master uh -huh, teachers. Uh -huh. He said, we all carry the minds of those who came mm -hmm. before us. No Look doubt. at a little baby. Yes. The, the mind that the parents tell us what's good, what's bad, what's not, you mm -hmm. form a family culture. That's right. Okay, that, in, in, that influence the behavior of the child or how that child thinks, you know? You know, and we were just talking a little earlier. Yes. And just saying that when you look at culture, you're speaking of everything. You're speaking of the food that you eat, the clothes exactly. that you wear, the language that exactly. you use, all of that. See, prior to enslaving and, and being brought here to America, we had an African language, okay? Yeah. We had an African diet or food that we ate. Now, just take that for an example. So now, you brought into slavery, you are giving what is now called slave food at that time, food. because which is the worst, worst of food. food. Yeah. Yes. Now we take that, and of course, you know, being creative people and being people, who, you know, Ooh, at least we want to taste something. Chris, we put our creativity to it and we make it now Delicious soul food. food. Yeah. Now we have that mind frame has been passed down generational. So now we have soul food. But really, it comes out of the experience of the enslavement, which was slave food. Now, we. I'm one of those people I think we have to go beyond the shores of America. We have to go back to Africa to it, really I'm understand what is our full who potential as yeah. a people. Yeah. So if we go back to the continent, then we can better understand 
the kind of diet, and I'm just using that as an example, as the diet. And we can understand the language, and we can understand the cultural values, because one of the things, and I know we both talk about it, because this is the Uboja circle, the principle of unity. I think we had a greater connection to that, that practice of unity, but being brought into this experience, that was a forces of division. And, and we're conditioned to believe in this European concept that doesn't even work in their culture. We're talking about, the yeah. we're talking about the rugged because, individualism. Yes. You know, that rugged individualism. I even hear a lot of our talking, I'm an individual. No, you cannot be in any culture. Again, a culture is a group of people who, based on the environment, okay, the actions of that group, the original people, whatever nation or yes. ethnic group yes. or village or whatever, mm -hmm. They look at the environment and they had shared experiences in that environment and they come together to form the village, to mm -hmm. form the, the, the agricultural areas. Yeah. And you use each individual show their talent. Yes. And that's what formed the culture, culture. the cultural yeah. behavior. Yeah, sometimes we think we can live outside the culture. <laughs> and Delusional. That's, yes, and we <laughs> think we're individualistic in the sense that we all, this I don't is need. all our own yeah, thinking. Nah, I'm thinking for myself. Nah, nah. And we don't realize many times the thoughts that we have, the words that we speak are those thoughts and words that have been passed on to wow. us by others. That's deep. So now we have to ask, is that really what I'm thinking? That, is that in my best interest? And is that in my image? See, uh, I think it was Dr. Karinga who talks about history is the humanizing of the world creating it in your interest and in your, your image. Yes, yes. So now, All groups do that. Oh, yes. You go to Chinatown, even here in America, <laughs> you're going to see their <laughs> culture. Little Italy. Little, Little Italy. Italy. Yes. You're going to see their culture. So we have to ask, what is our culture? Now, uh, is that, exactly. That's a good point. And that's why history is so important because then history can be used as a resource to help us to understand what but was our culture and then we take the best of our culture and bring it forward. And we hear in uh, people of African descent, you know, I've, I, I don't know how many times uh, through the years I've talked to individuals who try to educate me or uh, re-educate me into the system mm -hmm. and, you know, the, they, they'll say something like, well, Africa is a continent. Well, I know that. But I also know, knowing my history, mm -hmm. that that 5,000 square miles or even more of land that was depopulated was the land of Igbo, Ga people, yeah. Fani, yeah. Yoruba, yes. you know, the, many people, Angolan, mm -hmm. okay? And they, they, they were brought over here. They had their own unique language system, yes. their own uh, way of, like you said, but, took off their uh, term. Uh, their own spirituality, their own religion, their own way of dressing. And not only did they have to learn how to communicate with each other, mm -hmm. you know, they all look black, mm -hmm. you know, yes. but they had to uh, understand the language of a totally alien, you know, uh, culture. Yeah. And that's a dominant culture. culture. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, and that cultural imperialism of the dominant group was forced upon those. And we are the descendants. Yes. of all those people. So we have the right, like you said, to choose and pick whatever we want that is, yes. you know, is this African? And, yes. or does, and does this make me the best human and African at the same time? Beautiful. We know yeah. what we hear, we say we're African Americans, but most people are focused on the American part, whatever that is, the cultural imperialistic, where we were force fed. Mm -hmm. But what was the African part of the African American? Most people really doesn't, don't know that. And that's what we're talking about when, when you must know who you are. Yeah, and I think that's why, once again, the study of history is so important because it takes us back into that cultural experience in order to move forward. You know, so that's what Malcolm, this, that's what this, Malcolm meant when he yeah. said, of all our studies, history is best prepared to reward no, no. Your, your research. research. So, you know, we're both aware and of course celebrate Kwanzaa. Yeah. You have the language of Kiswahili utilized in, in Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa exactly. So you have these, this language, which is trying to reintroduce us to an African language. Okay, you have the, uh, the principles of Kwanzaa, which one is Umoja, unity, Kujijakalia, yeah. self-determination, and favorite. so forth. Yeah. Now, the idea is that 
what we're trying to expose ourselves to is that we had a rich culture. See, and once again, going back to say that we had certain foods we ate. We had certain kind of clothes we wore. We had family structure. We had political we, structure. We had political structure. We had an economic structure. We had all these things in place. Now, we implant into a foreign culture. Now we take on, we are forced to take on somebody else's we language. We had no choice, you're right. Yes. Now, the interesting thing about when you're forced to take on someone else's culture, especially when that culture has been imposed upon you and it's anti-you. Key word imposed. And it's anti-you. So now you look at the language within the English language. And we all speak English, so we're going to speak English to communicate with each other. But within that, there's certain... Uh, connotations around even the word black you know you look at the word black in the dictionary how is it defined as dismal ugly yeah depressing, evil, depressing. Yeah, yeah. now we know co black is just a color so how can it be that in this culture that we're living in it has defined a s word to basically degrade, degrade us. us, yes. So now we have to ask, well, how do we fight against that imposed cultural oppression? S I think one of our historians who really did a great job, along, of course, Malcolm X, of course, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and they said, no, black, it, we came to, well, <laughs> then we go to James Brown. Black it's is beautiful. beautiful. Black is strong. We, we are from black that intelligence. from that black power movement. Yes. That's, 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 that's what we're saying. And now we ask ourselves as we move forward, we have to say, what is black excellence? You know, I'm one that says that uh, it's not that we have to look at the world as colorless. No, we have to respect the colors Colorful. that are in the world. Yes. So we have to respect the brown. We have to respect the, the yellow, yellow. We have to respect the, the white. And, and we white. have to respect the, the black. black. Yeah. So if we exactly, I'm just yeah. getting excited listening to what you're saying because it's so reflective of my thought. It's so refreshing to hear somebody who who gets it, who who could articulate it. And you are a, a, a model of possibilities. This is what study of our culture and our history looks like. Yeah, and, and I appreciate it. I thank you for that because we've known each other a long time, and you know. Uh, we grew up in this society, and Steep it wasn't it. like we was born into this way of thinking and being. But that was something that challenged us and kind of pushed us, you know, some of the great scholars that you exactly. have spoken of yes. and the information yeah. that was presented to us. See, when I was introduced to Ivan Baron Sertima so and, and Dr. John yeah. Henry Clark Joseph and, and ben Joseph ben Yakuman, yeah. when I now initially, I didn't just embrace it. You know, because I went on with the everyday uh, that cultural imperial that yes. cultural imperialism is like yes. a, uh, uh, something that's buried deep inside of you, and you had yes. to fight that first. And the thing I started to realize, I thought, well, maybe we can just do this over the weekend. Maybe we can just do it during Black History Month and get some few facts and feel good about ourselves. <laughs> but I realized that was not going to be enough for no. me, and it's not going to be enough, enough for us, us as, as a, a people. Pe exactly, we're going to have to go full force into this, and we're going to have to make it a it's, as one of our uh, scholars said, yeah. a cultural mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to change the way we think. We've got to change the way we act. We've got to change That's why I say it's a resource. We yes. got, when, what do you do with a resource? You protect a resource. No doubt. You yes. can't let somebody else utilize your resource for financial gain. Yes. Because if you let allow another group, because there is a, knowing your culture has an economic uh, aspect yes, because yes, if yes. another group de defines who you are and they're the same group that produce the products mm -hmm. that fits that definition mm -hmm. then in your consumption That's of right. that product you are going to maintain mm -hmm. their power right. over you and that's why we got to say if you talk to a, a Jewish brother or sister then we we define them as something mm -hmm. else, they're gonna say no. That's not who we are, mm -hmm. because they know their culture. Yes. If you say, if you talk to somebody that is Japanese, or you talk to somebody that's a Navajo or, or a Cheyenne mm -hmm. Native person, mm -hmm. and you try to define their culture outside of who they do, how they define themselves, like yes. you're talking about, mm -hmm. they're gonna say, nah, no, that's, that's not who I am. You can't mm -hmm. tell me how I do mm -hmm. my rituals or how mm -hmm. I do. We're the only one that were. Take it off, like Dr. Clark said. We were taking off our 
cultural uh, steps. Yeah. We were yeah. taking off mm -hmm. of our uh, politics. We were taking off our behavioral attitude that comes mm -hmm. from knowing our culture. Yes. Your yeah. culture defines how you think and you behave. Know, it's, uh, I've heard Professor James Small ah, speak yes. of the fact that your culture is really the foundation of your economics. Exactly. Because once you define your culture, your economic feeds into, into and that. off of your culture. So if this, these are the foods that you eat, then you, let's let, let, get a good example. You take a bean pie. Okay, yeah. you say this is going to be part of our diet, all right? Now, the aspects of that is that you got to grow the beans, you got to process the beans, you got to distribute the beans, you got to bake the bean pie. And that's now, all if that's your culture, yeah. yes. Yeah. Now, somebody has to do all those steps, so you employ people to do that. Now, you commit to saying, look here, if this is going to be our diet, then I'm going to buy that. You open up a, a, a bakery. And I come to you. you. You see what I'm saying? If we're saying that certain clothes is going to be our cultural wear, then you make the clothes. Like we got brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa making dashikis, making African clothes, making the, you know, the, the stroll, the stole yeah. there. So now we say if that's going to be our cultural wear, then we go purchase those things. We set up an economics behind that. You, you see yeah, what I'm saying? And we're going to have to, but. We're yeah. almost out of time. Oh, no, no. This is, this is what happens on the Emoji Circle. And you can see that we got a lot more to say. We'll continue this conversation yes. on our next show. But one of the things that culture te teaches you, um, there is a spiritual concept that we all follow as, as human beings, yes. you know? Yes. And that's what is to know who we are. Know thyself. That's an ancient African concept. And we'll leave it there for now. So until next time, peace. Hotel. Bye-bye.